In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most fundamental convolution options, kernel size. I'll explain what kernel size controls and which values you should use for your neural network. First of all, kernel means the same thing as filter. They're used interchangeably, sometimes in the same documentation. I'm looking at you, TensorFlow. Kernel size determines the height and width of the filters. We combine the filter with a patch of the same size, so the kernel size also determines the size of the input patch. We can select any value from one pixel by one pixel up to the size of the input. You can also pick a different value for the width and the height. Also, notice how the kernel size affects the size of the output. The output resolution will be the number of patches that we can fit along the input. A kernel as large as the input resolution will cause the output to shrink to one by one because it uses the entire input for a single patch. A one by one kernel will use each pixel for its own patch, so the output will be the same resolution as the input. So which size should you use? The short answer is that you typically want to use three by three, and sometimes one by one. For the long answer, we'll look at a brief history of the ImageNet competition. In 2012, AlexNet became the first convolutional neural network to win this competition. At this point in time, AlexNet was a pioneer, and 3x3 kernels hadn't become king yet. It used an 11x11 kernel for its first convolution, and a 5x5 kernel for the second convolution. Then it used 3x3 kernels for the remaining convolutions. The next year, in 2013, Matt Zeiler won the competition with an optimized version of AlexNet. One optimization was reducing the size of the 11x11 kernel in the first convolution to 7x7. This led to cleaner filter patterns in the first and second convolutional layers. Notice the mix of high frequency and low frequency patterns in the 11x11 kernel with poor coverage of medium sized patterns. In the 7x7 kernel, the medium frequency patterns are covered much better. Also, the low frequency patterns are more vivid and colorful. And don't worry about the high frequency patterns, they're now detected by a deeper layer. Back to the architecture, the second convolution's kernel size remained 5x5. But that was about to change. Because the very next year, in 2014, 3x3 filters took the throne. The Visual Geometry Group from Oxford won with a network using exclusively 3x3 kernels. You see, they made an important realization. We don't need larger kernels. Something magical happens when we chain multiple 3x3 convolutions together. Each pixel in the first layer can only see a 3x3 patch of the input, but the second layer sees a 3x3 patch of pixels in the first layer, and that 3x3 patch in the first layer can see a combined area of 5x5 in the input image. We can say that the second layer has a receptive field of 5x5, so a chain of two 3x3 convolutions can effectively see the same sized patch as a single 5x5 convolution. This is a big deal, because smaller kernels mean fewer weights and less computation. Two 3x3 convolutions only use 72% of the parameters and computation as a single 5x5. And three 3x3 convolutions use only 55% of the resources of a single 7x7. The one exception to this logic is the very first layer, since the input only has three channels. So it's common to see a 5x5 or 7x7 filter for the first layer. So that's the story of why everyone loves 3x3. The next most common size is 1x1. You'll see this quite frequently simply because it's the least expensive way to change the number of features in your feature map, which can be a handy thing to do. What about even-sized filters? We don't talk about those. Seriously, 
I've never seen a research paper even acknowledge that they exist. Please discredit me in the comments. To summarize, the kernel size controls the height and width of the filters, which also determines the height and width of the input patch. It also inversely affects the height and width of the output. You should generally use 3x3 convolutions because they're more efficient than 5x5 or 7x7. Except for the first layer, where 5x5 and 7x7 is more efficient. Also, use 1x1 convolutions when you want to efficiently change the feature count. And that wraps it up for kernel size. In upcoming videos, I'll be covering filter count, padding, stride, and more. So subscribe if you're interested.